Karen Berniston, the designer of Pop It Up's products for Elizabeth Craft Designs. And today I'll be teaching how to make this. A twist circle window card. So this is going to be a great year-round card technique for any theme, but today I will be decorating it as a Christmas card. I'm using a strip of cardstock as my outer card, and that measurement is 5 inches tall by 11 inches long, and then I've done some scoring on this strip. Measuring from the left, I've scored at 4 and 3 quarters inches, 9 and 3 quarters inches, and 10 and a half inches. And then I chose a fun pattern paper to be my inner pop-up card. The measurement here is 4 and 3 quarters tall by 9 and a half inches wide, and I have also scored this piece at 4 and 5 eighths of an inch measuring from the left-hand side. So what this creates is an inner card that will fit inside the outer card and leave that little border of cardstock around the outside. For the front of the card, a piece of cardstock or paper that's four and a half inches wide by four and three quarters inches tall. I'm using the Pop It Up's Twist Circle die set. That's number 1207, and I'm starting with the Pop Up die itself. Now that die has some alignment nubs that make it really easy to line up right over the fold of any size card anywhere along the fold. I've just centered it here and I've made sure that my alignment nubs are right over the fold of the card. And I love using my removable scotch tape to hold that die in place while I roll it through a die cutting machine. Now any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die will work with Pop It Up's dies. I'm using a Sizzix Big Shot today. After rolling it through the die cutting machine, it's just a matter of removing the die and then training the folds that have been made by the die. This die is such an easy one to train. I always just find the fold in the middle and then back fold, and that allows me to really see the score lines that the die has put into the paper, and they're on a diagonal. So I want to train those diagonal folds. So it's a matter of just folding over the paper on the diagonal. And you will notice as you start to use this die that there's really only one way that you can fold it on the diagonal. And so that's the direction you would go in. But it's just a matter of finding those diagonal folds, then you bring them right back up to the center again. So what I want to do is I want to fold the card in the usual manner, but have my thumbs underneath those little sections so that as the card is closed, those little sections will want to fold into the card. And that is all there is to it. It's actually a very simple die to train. There's another die in the set that creates the top part of the pop-up. And I normally just cut that out of the same color as my inner card. So I've used the same pattern paper and I've die cut my upper part of the pop-up. Now I find that it's easiest to fold this by putting my thumbnail into the little score lines which I can see easiest on the side that I've die cut down into. So I fold all of those towards the side where they've been scored. But for this particular piece, direction is important. They all need to be reversed now because it should be a mountain where all of them are going in the same direction and you see the color that you cut into on the top of that mountain because that's going to hook in now under the pop-up just like that. So I could have added my top platform right now, but I think I'm going to go ahead and add my inner card inside my backing card first, and then I'll add the upper part of the platform. It really doesn't matter what adhesive you use to add a pop-up card inside a backing card. I'm just going to use a tape runner here for ease, and I'm just adding that tape runner all over one side of the pop-up. Then I'm going to make sure the fold is in the fold, and it's centered the way I like it, and then I'll press that side down. Gets much easier on the second side because it's already attached to the card, so it's really just a matter of adding the adhesive all over the flat parts of the other side of the pop-up, closing the card against it. So now I have my pop-up installed inside the backing card. You can see as the card is opened and closed, that pop-up pops in and out, but it does need the upper part of the platform. Once again, adhesive is really up to you. I could have used tape, I could have used a glue dot, probably something stronger than a tape runner, but what I'm gonna to use today is glue. So I'm just adding a little glue underneath the tab. What I want is that fold of that upper platform to basically be right along the flat cut edge of that lower platform. You can see it's attached right there. Then I'm just gonna repeat the process for the other side. So the glue goes underneath the tab because it's actually going to hook under that little flat part of the platform until that fold is right along the flat part of that platform. And I can even press it down like this to make sure it's attached. 
Now from doing the pressing, it's probably a good idea the first time you close this, since I've been squishing it down, to get my thumbs under there and sort of help it relearn those folds so that it will come up and into the card and start twisting as the card is opened and closed. Now you are not required to put a circle on the platform, but the die set does come with several of them, and I'm going to use the second largest circle for my card today. This one actually cuts a circle that has some decorative stitch lines in it as well. I'll use some of the Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive tape, really nice strong tape on the front of the platform, and that's where I'm going to attach my circle, but not quite yet because this is going to be a window card and I want to be able to adjust my circle location based on where I would like the window to be. So instead of using the tape I just added on the platform, I'll just leave the backer on that for now. And instead I'm going to put a piece of temporary scotch removable tape behind the platform and put my circle on there. Now I'm just going to put it kind of even with the bottom of the platform and check. Does that stay within the card? Yes it does but it also means that my window is going to be pretty close to my front card edge. So I think I'd like to move that circle down just a smidge, and that way what it'll do is in the closed position, it'll move that circle further towards the fold inside the card, which means it just gives it a little bit more clearance when I go to cut the window into the front of the card. I'd like the window about right there. So once I've decided on the position that I want, then I can use the same exact die, so the die that has the stitch marks, the same die that I used for the circle that's going to go on the platform, that's what's going to be used to cut the window. So with the blade side up, I need to have some temporary tape underneath it. And then what I want to do is I want to use the circle platform as my guide for where the die should go to be able to cut the window. So in the closed position, I slide the die in blade side up, that tape is underneath it, and then I can press in the closed position and it'll transfer the die now to the other side of the card in exactly the right position to line up with that circle in the closed position. Now I can remove the circle that was on my pop-up platform and get rid of the temporary tape. That was all about just placing the die in the right position to cut the window. And now what I need to do is send this through my die cutting machine just far enough to cut that window. So my cutting pad is gonna stop just after the die. So once I get it, the die itself covered, then that's all I'll need to do to be able to cut that window. And I may need to kind of press down my platform. It's probably going to partially go under the rollers, but what I really want is just as soon as those rollers clear that cutting pad, then I know that it's die cut the window, and I can take the cutting pad out, slide the card out in the direction that I started. Now, I don't want to remove the die itself, but I can remove the paper from inside the die. I still have another layer for the front of the card, that red piece of cardstock that I cut for the front, that also needs the window put into it. Now, I could have temporarily put the red cardstock on the front of the card, tried to cut down through three layers at one time, but I wasn't sure the die would go through all three of those layers, so it's just as easy to do it this way, which is just take the paper out. Now, I'm going to use that tape that's on the die to help hold my piece for the front in place while I die cut. So I'm basically just taking advantage of the tape that was already on the die, get in there and give it a good press. And then maybe just for good measure so that it doesn't wiggle on the outside edges, I'm gonna add another piece of temporary tape just on some edge somewhere to make sure that it stays straight. Now I'm gonna repeat that exact same process because I would like to cut the window in the correct position through the red cardstock as well. So the cutting pad needs to stop just as soon as it clears the die, and then I'm going to roll that through, kind of pressing down my platform so that it can partially enter the machine as needed to just until I get my cutting pad through. Then the cutting pad comes out, and I can slide the card easily back out in the direction that I started. So that completes all of the die cutting of the window, so then the die can come off and I can remove my temporary front. I'm going to leave that little piece of tape in the upper right corner because it'll help me remember the orientation when I go to put it back on the front of the card. Okay, now I get to put my pop-up circle back on the pop-up again, and this is going to be a great chance to do this through the window. So I can peel up the liner of that tape that I had already added earlier, and then I can just press my die cut circle right down through the window and that way I know it's going to line up perfectly with the window in the closed position and then it's going to pop up when the card is opened. I'm going to cover the back of my red piece with adhesive for adhering it to the front of the card but before I do that I want to add a window pane over the opening that's going to keep that pop-up circle from coming up through the opening and possibly getting stuck in the opening. 
That can be any kind of clear material. I've just used a printer transparency. I also have four very small but very strong and thin magnets. So that's actually a stack of four of them there. I get them from K&J Magnetics, and I'll put that link in the About section or on the blog post. But you could also use the basic gray magnets or any kind of magnet that you can find that's really strong and really small. I'm going to go back to my strong tape from Elizabeth Craft Designs. That's the 10 millimeter size. And I'm going to go and cover the outside flap with that tape. And then I want to peel that up. And into that tape, I'd like to stick two magnets. So I'm just going to peel off two magnets from the stack one at a time, and I want to put those magnets down into the adhesive, but I'd like to place them a little bit into the card from the top and the bottom. That way my little smaller red piece on the front will still cover their location, but also very close to the fold. So you can see they're really close to the fold of the card. And that way when I fold that flap over, they will actually end up staying very close to the outside edge of the card. So that may seem backwards, but that's the way you do it. You put the magnets close to the fold, and then when they fold over, they end up close to the edge. My other two magnets are just going to stick to those inner two, so they don't have any adhesive on them yet, because actually where I want to put the adhesive is on top of those magnets. So I'm not trying to stick them down in their current location. They're just sticking there because they're attracted to the magnets that are inside the flap. Once I have small glue dots on the top of them, then I can carefully fold the flap over and it will transfer those magnets now onto the front of the card in the exact correct position to be able to line up with the ones that are hidden inside the flap. And by putting those on the front of the card now, before I've put the front piece on, then this red piece will cover it. And I'm glad I left my tape on because I don't have to think about it. I know that that goes in the upper right corner. I can just remove that tape and then line up the circle over the opening and get my red piece placed on the front of the card. And that will also cover the magnets. So that completes the basic structure of the card. And you can see how generic it is. It ends up being just a little five by five card, magnetic flap, window on the front, open it, and the circle twists and pops up. Now one decorating consideration is that you can add things to the transparency on the front of the card is no problem at all. Inside the card might be a bit of a problem because you may create a catch point for your twisting circle. You, you'll be able to see that when it collapses down, it hits that transparency. So if you add a catch point there, that could be a problem. But the front of the card is no problem. And I'm actually going to go ahead and further embellish that little beaded circle die that comes with the twist circle set by adding some glitter dots to all of the little beads. This really is the perfect size window for any of the character dies, and so I've chosen Chili the Penguin, and I'm going to dress him up with the reindeer outfit from Props 5. And I can decide on placement of Chili the Penguin by working kind of with the card closed and then opened. So sliding him in and then looking at how he appears through the window, figuring out, you know, how he's going to move. Basically, if I have him tilt to the right, then as I open the card, he will end up tilting to the left. Since mine is a holiday card, I thought that the large ornament topper die from the ring accordion would be just perfect. And to get that embossed look, I actually took the silver cardstock and put two pieces back to back using the Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive in the middle. That way it was nice and thick, and then when I die cut it, it would give me that embossed without me having to go back through with an embossing sandwich. Yes, I know what you're thinking, and yes, it would have been easier to do these white gel pen stitch marks before I assembled the pop-up. I just didn't happen to think of it. A nice thing about the twist circle is having those various circles in different sizes. So by nesting the stitched one with the largest one, you can get a nice thin ring. And that makes a very nice little edging to those window openings. And I went ahead and put one on the inside of the card and on the front of the card just to give that nice little polished edge to my windows. I finished out the decoration of my card with some striped washi tape that I put on the flaps both inside and out. And then I used the holiday clear stamps to add a greeting, and I also decorated that as an ornament. Now, one thing about placement of the greeting is I made sure that it was in the upper right of that panel so that it wouldn't become a catch point as the twist circle closes. Supply links are in the About section on YouTube, or you can go to the associated blog post. And the link is in the upper right corner of this video or in the About section below. 
You can subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'd love it if you do so. I also have a Facebook page, Karen Berniston Designer, where I post daily inspiration. And you'll always find more ideas on my blog, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.